Everybody loves awesome daytime photos, right? So how can we and all of you get better daytime trail camera photos? Well, to start, better cameras are gonna take better pictures, but how you set these cameras up can go a long way with the overall, overall photo quality of what you're actually getting. If you were to ask a photographer about the basics, you're likely going to hear the phrase, control the light. Now, there's ways to manipulate that, there's ways to get it to get it wrong. But a couple general rule of, rules of thumb, you always hear, point your cameras north. That is a way to control the light. Now that only gets you so far. Another thing you can do is do anything that you can to get away from very harsh lighting contrast. So for example, a field edge set would be a great example of this. You have your camera set in the field edge under a heavy canopy tree in the shade, but you're monitoring maybe an inside corner of a bean field, lots of sun. The light metering system off that camera is going to take a reading based off where it is. So it's in the shade. It's going to take that reading of X amount of light is available and then it's going to compute that off to your exposure tables to take an actual photo. That's why you see a lot of those sets to be overexposed or blown out. The photos could be called hot and they're not that great a photo. So just remember, control the light. Now that we have the, the extreme basics covered, there's a lot of things that you could do with framing to really enhance the qualities of your photos. Now, I know this probably sounds goofy because at the end of the day, you have to put the camera in a location to do its job. I totally get that. That is priority number one. Put your camera where it's going to take pictures and accomplish your goal. But playing with angles and framing can take your kind of trail camera photo game up to that next level. With framing, oftentimes you'll hear the rule of thirds. So if you were to cut that photo into thirds, you're trying to basically frame that subject up in one of those thirds where the other two thirds are open. To take that a step further, you can add background, you can add open sky, you can add things to give the photo depth, both in the background and the foreground. You know, a lot of times we see these photos on social media and we think, oh my gosh, that's such a cool photo. I can't believe that happened. You know, sometimes it's by mistake or it's by luck, but other times someone set that camera up specifically to get that exact shot. So. There's more to it than just getting lucky. And when you start thinking about framing, framing is an easy way to kind of take your photos to the next level. And you can do the same thing with angles, specifically around, you know, videos. If you're running, you know, minerals or bait over the summer, uh, placing your cameras down low or up high can give you a different perspective. With angles and framing, you can actually take that one step further and use objects. So you could use a fence and use like leading lines. You can use water. Water is a great example where you can use angles to get that camera down low to the water and capture some really unique like waterfowl images. Obviously there's a con there. You have a rain event, thing floods and your camera's toast. But also you can get that camera kind of elevated up in the air, angled down to where you can actually capture some really cool images that have maybe a reflection in them on a super calm day where the, the water's like glass, you can capture some really unique images. So with angles and framing, don't just think standard sets, think outside of the box. What can, what can you add to that framing? What kind of angle would give you, uh, you know, a unique photo? So water's a great way to do that. Fence or some type of leading edge is another great way to do that. We've already touched on the light metering system and how that works off of auto exposure tables. If you really want to take your photos up to you know the one percenters of the world you can manipulate your light metering system and a great example of this is a lot of the sunset photos that you'll see um, you know during that golden hour where you have a subject that is completely kind of silhouetted so the subject in frame is basically we'll call it gray or black or just dark you can't really tell what it is but the entire frame the rest of the frame of the photo, the background, you have this gorgeous purple pink sky sunset during that, during that last few minutes of daylight. Now that is happening by manipulating your light metering system. So the camera is down low. Again, we're playing angles. It's tilted up. So that light metering system is gathering all the available light left in that last 10, 15 minutes of the day. You have a subject coming in probably on mineral or bait. We have him framed up in a third and that subject that white tail whatever the subject is is completely silhouetted with the rest of the photo being in color if you're a guy out there wanting to get better daytime photos these are things that can definitely help you so remember control the light angles and framing and manipulate your light metering system